Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. I'm just going to adjust the camera here. Hope you're all well. So uh, I'm coming in live here, live uh, for the show tonight. And uh, I'm just, uh, just trying to make sure that I've got a good signal uh, out there for you all. So uh, any of you uh, in the chat, let us know. Uh, if you're watching afterwards, let us know as well. Uh, how, how are you getting on? How is how's the video stream coming through? And all that kind of stuff. So this is going to be another a live stream podcast video podcast radio show <laughs> type thing again uh so you can be talking about bike talk about anything you want really so whoever's in the chat uh yeah if you want to ask any questions let us know let us know sorry i'm a little bit late uh tonight i was supposed to come on at eight o'clock uh but unfortunately again just life kind of got in the way uh but uh, let me just check the um the strength of of this this is all looking good yet yeah. so hopefully hopefully it will be coming through so uh, i wanted to come on quickly tonight and uh, discuss a couple of things uh i suppose primarily about triumph motorcycles but i also want to talk about a few other uh, latest bikes that i've, I've noticed uh, in the last couple of days uh, and then uh, talk about other stuff going on uh, with the channel, with me, uh, whatever you like, whatever you want to, to know, then uh, just let us know. But anyway, so um, today has been a bit of an eventful day, really. I did a, quite a good, quite a good day. Uh, one thing or another, some good news came my way, but also uh, the uh, the channel sort of took a, a step in the right direction, or the website, I should say, more so. Uh, so there's lots going on still there. I'm still working on it, still developing it. You can show uh, your support for the channel, uh, you know, with the via the the little ticker uh, thing uh, below, the super chat, super thanks, all that kind of stuff. Afterwards, uh, website, merchandise, and also the PayPal donate me. You know the score. Uh, I have been toying with a membership type thing or with a Patreon type thing uh, to help support the channel and help develop things a little bit more. But as I say, I, I haven't gone there yet. So pretty much I'm just doing this uh, as I want. And um, yeah, the, the way I'm producing videos now, it's a lot, it's a lot more manageable. It's a lot, not easier, but it's um, more more to my liking let's put it that way it's more the kind of stuff that i want to do and more more creative and more storytelling type thing um so i mean so that's good so i've been working on the bike a little bit the last couple of weeks as well uh which is good these two bikes in here well the one i really put back together again that's fine the other bike that's kind of ground to a halt was so i wait for some parts or try and source some parts uh but anyway that's pretty much what's been going on. So everything that's going on with the the website and the, the channel is all good. But I wanted to um, look at uh, some of the new bikes that have come on. So I'm going to share a screen here and just talk my way through it, as it were. And then, uh, then we can all have a little discussion, can't we? Right. Uh, there we go. Right. So let me just put this on this one here. No, wrong one. That? There we go. Right. So I'm just going to put, make this full screen. There we go. Right. So again, um, this is from a site called Visor Down. And this is this is a few days old now. But Ducati uh, have come out with their Multistrada V4, uh, the rally announced for 2023, which is quite, you know, quite... Um, um it's a nice addition to the ducati lineup and with the to the, the the ducati multistrada is a really nice um sorry it's it's a really nice bike there we go uh, i'm down here in the, the bottom corner <laughs> i lost myself every minute uh, yeah really nice bike very capable but the question was always what is its off-road credentials in terms of being robust enough and and, and you know it, it is robust, but I think it's really trying to take a high performance look at the off road sector. And you know, even says here, adventure motorcycle fans take note there is a new king of the jungle. Well, that's a bit of a funny thing to say. As the Ducati Multistrada V4 rallies announced for 2023, 
Like the Explorer models, the new Triumph Tiger 1200, the V, uh, the Multistrada V4 Rally, takes the already eminently capable stock bike, adding more range, better off-road handling and control, and improved comfort. As the name suggests, though, this bike is born for the dirt and features some elements that might hamper everyday on road use i mean this is so this is definitely more geared towards the off-road sector and uh, let me just see if there's any more um i'm just a little it's frozen on me for some there we go right um yeah look i mean it's the thing is when you when you got uh, they got promo material of any bike they always make it look good don't they but the thing is this is going to be I, I mean i don't know what the um the price point of this is going to be but it's basically saying the new ducati multistrada v4 rally uh, also has new power mode specifically for extreme off-road riding not that the v4s is practically bad on that front although peak power and torque in the road riding modes remain the same 170 horsepower and 89 foot pounds of torque um the enduro riding mode activates a dedicated power mode, reducing the power to 114 horsepower. That is still a huge amount of power for an off-road uh, off-road bike, of course. Um, but look, I mean, it, look, it looks nice, I, I would say, but it's kind of it, it's it, they are very similar. The the um, the adventure bikes, you know, in, in because they have to be, I suppose. That there is limited scope in sort of design, as it were. Um, but that should uh, be an absolute maximum range between 230 and 250 miles with a 30, uh, 30 litre fuel tank, increasing the range uh, by about 60 miles. Um, Yeah, so the rear cylinder deactivation of the Gran Turismo uh, engine has also been adjusted with the rear bank of cylinders now deactivated while the bike's in motion. Previously, it would only do this at a standstill when you were waiting at traffic lights. So sim similar to the EEI TMS of the, the Harley Davidsons, of course. And basically, because they're, they're twins, um, you know, and that rear cylinder is going to get hotter and hotter. Um, but now the system deactivates the rear bank when riding gently to evade to aid fuel economy. So, okay, so that's interesting. And from, from this side here, it kind of looks okay. I'm not really sure about this front section here that the headlight area that looks a bit uh interesting uh what have we got i'm sure you're going to get lots of road reviews there there's no um price on this but you know you know add add uh a nice hefty price tag on there i mean people always question you know, uh, Ducati bikes in terms of their overall longevity, their reliability, um, and things like that. But I think they are they are awesome bikes. So I, I've ridden a, a multi strider years ago, many years ago now, um, and just fantastic, fantastic, fantastic road touring bike, I would say. But I'm not just convinced by these. You know, I don't think you just need a big, you, you big, massive, powerful bike for off road. You know. But if you're using it as a touring bike, and let's face it, if you're going to go off-road, you're basically not going to be using anywhere near that power uh, that you'll that you'll need on that, or that you've got on that bike anyway. But there we go. So it's it's an interesting bike, the Ducati Multistrada, you know, and so if, you know for this for this um, for, for for the off-road world, or certainly for a general uh, adventure bike, I think it's a great bike. You know, and it's certainly a great road riding bike as well. But I'm I'm just not sure whether it's um it's it's whether you need to spend your money for any kind of off road capability uh, on a Ducati. You know, I would say if you're going to get a Ducati, I would say get the just get the road, the total road capable multi and and you know just have limited you know um capability to go off road but just have it as a nice upright tourer and you know an expensive bike, but it goes really really fast on the road so you know why not i mean if that's what you want i mean i think there there are probably you know just as good if not better 
off-road capable and big adventure bikes uh, from other manufacturers that won't cost you as much and um, but yeah they won't produce as much power or certainly won't go as fast but you're never going to need it anyway so you know what's the point really um so that's that one uh, let me just um let me see if i can just bring this back here hold on uh there we go sorry right there was another story from Visor Down, which I thought the Visor Down have got a couple of uh, stories here, which is quite interesting. Let me just come back here. On the previous live stream, I went through a few of these newer bikes, but um, yeah, the Honda Hornet I talked about the other night. Suzuki reveals the 2023 Bergman Street 125. I mean, the Bergman Street bikes of Suzuki are very popular on a global level. So here's one of the, the stories I, I thought was quite interesting here. Um, you've got, let me just put make this a full-size page. You've got Suron, the electric fun bike uh, manufacturers. They've come out with their first um, all-purpose dirt bike, a full-size Suron Storm B dirt bike finally breaks cover. The electric off-road motorcycle manufacturer has announced his first full-size model, and it's a Suron Strom, sorry, Strom B. Um, and this is what a lot of adults of, you know, of a certain size, let's say, have been um, waiting for, because Suron are very popular, especially with the nerd wheels around, um, you know, places. But, you know, but they, they are, you know, very capable bike and fun bikes. And if you're looking for you know, an off-road capable bike. This is the way to go, I think. And a Suron has been making electric dirt bikes for off-road use for some time now, although its offerings in the UK up until now aren't what many would term a proper motorcycle with many components using the previous models coming from downhill bicycle sector. Yeah, they were kind of a crossover from bicycle use there and then into uh, the um, the electric motorcycle uh, type thing. This new model is a complete departure for the firm as what, as you would call, a proper dirt bike. Uh, and it, look, there's lots of these, these manufacturers right now. They're really jumping on the electric dirt bike um movement and um you know the power is claimed to be 22.5 kilowatts 30 horsepower while torque is a monstrous 383 foot pounds 383 foot pounds of torque that is that right no surely not blimey away from the performance figures the hardware the new bike also looks good with proper upside down forks uh piggyback uh rear shock and a lightweight frame nine thousand pounds nine thousand pounds for a uk bike interesting interesting but a lot of these uh, manufacturers are starting to come out with electric capable bikes rider of the north hello from sweden hello there how are you uh Nice to see you here. Thank you. Thank you for joining. And, oh, sorry, did I just get rid of you there? There we go. Right. Let's have a look. Uh, Flat Cap race, uh, Cafe Racer, 20K plus high horsepower, high tech electrics, high heat, heavy sounds uh, like a perfect bike that any 20 year six footer plus that makes six figures a year would want. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I take your point ex exactly. Paul. Uh, good evening. I actually caught one of your live chats. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining. Uh, but say, so, you know, there's, there's there are a few there are a few bikes uh, that have, you know, caught the eye the last couple of days. Let me just uh, come back here and I want to just bring a couple more if I can. Hold on. Sorry, wrong one. There we go. And there was, right, I'm going to be talking about Triumph in general in a minute. But here's another one. Okay, Vespa, they've brought, they've launched a lot of their GTS range. And Vespa, but I'm not going to talk about them. But, you know, if you're into Vespas and that kind of thing, scooters, you know, Vespa leading the, the lights, really, aren't they, in, in the way they do it. But here, Horex, uh, Horex uh, make um, uh, some, you know, decent bikes but they you know the sm small manufacturer from germany i believe they are um but they they produce this bike here which is um a horex regina evo uh, features a full carbon fiber frame 48 horsepower and weighs just 133 kilos and that's light the German motorcycle show Intermot has revealed an interesting little bike as a uh, modern and retro Horex Regina Evo is real to the world. Um, where are Horex from? I think they're either from Holland or from 
from Germany. I can't remember. Uh, they make um, some six-cylinder bikes as well. And these are kind of all hand-built or bespoke bikes and that kind of thing. But what I wanted to show you on this one is that if you look at that picture there, what does it remind you of? To me, it reminds me of a CCM. It reminds me of a CCM. Now, I'm not saying they've copied the design or anything like that at all. But, you know, when I first saw that, I thought CCM. I don't maybe it's the maybe it's the design of the tank, the shape of the tank. Maybe it's the way that the tail, the seat tail comes off. Um, don't know. I don't know what it is, but there's something about that bike that just reminds me of a CCM. Uh, you know, which CCM? I, I couldn't tell you, um, but, you know. But anyway, all right. So they've come out. I mean, they're they're after extended hiatus. The firm began churning out bikes again in 2010 with its revolutionary uh, VR6 engine. The new Regina Evo, though, is a complete departure from that direction. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the real talking point is, but it has to be the carbon fiber frame. Uh, it's carb. It's a monocoque design. Even the swing arm seat and body panels all hewn, uh, hewn from the lightweight material, and that's what's given it. It's 133 kilos. I mean, that's pretty impressive, really. Okay. Right. So that is a couple of other bikes I wanted to talk about there. Uh, let me just bring this over. Why is I've, I've lost my cursor, by the way, because I'm operating on two screens for some reason. Oh, there we go. Seem to have anyway. Uh, I seem to have uh, lost my cursor there. Let me just uh, wait until that decides to do its own thing. There we go. Right and. Um, so let me just bring this back here. There we go. Uh, so you know, I I thought there's some decent there's some decent uh, bikes out there. The last couple of weeks have been decent bikes, but this is what I wanted to talk about more and more, and it's it's Triumph. Triumph. Now I've been getting quite a few emails from Triumph the last few days, and you know um, I've got the other website up here as well. But um, you know, motorcycle news here in the UK, they're, they're also covering the Horex and obviously the the Hornet and, and stuff like that. And I'm sure, a lot, as I say, a lot of these uh, publications all cover the same sort of stories. But you know, premium bonds. Triumph celebrates 60 years of Britain's best known spy with a special. This is. Uh, Triumph have been heavily linked with uh, James Bond, uh, you know, featuring in their films and, and stuff like that. But they've also had this whole line of James Bond motorcycle type things anyway. Um, and they've got this um, Speed Triple RR. And basically the Speed Triple RR is a Speed Triple with just a fairing on top, really. Yeah, there's a little bit extra on it, but it's, you know... <clears throat> One of the questions I always raise was why don't Triumph make an all-purpose one-liter sports bike? And I suppose this is their version of it, but it isn't. It isn't an all-purpose sports bike. It's just you know a speed triple with a little bit of extra. Let's say I mean it is a very fast bike, but it's not. It's not a sports bike in the in the modern context of the word as it were but anyway listen um i don't know who's i'll, I'll go back to visor down i'll say there's a nice little picture let me just bring it on full screen here for you guys there we go and i'll bring make that full screen as well i mean so it looks nice i mean it definitely looks nice and i've you know i've i've um i've ridden the speed triple of course and uh yeah great very nice bike very capable. I thought it was just a bit too small for me, for my, for my uh, size. Um, but I thought it was a nice bike. Um, the but this obviously is the uh, um, the the one for the line of bikes uh, produced by um, by Triumph for the 007 range, as it were. Um, but you know, it, it looks really nice. But as I say, the Speed Triple 1200R is one of Triumph's latest and most advanced motorcycles featuring electronically adjustable front forks from Olin, so Olin's front forks, uh, Stylema calipers from Brembo, Brembo brakes, and Diablo Super Corsa tires from Pirelli, a three cylinder engine producing 177 horsepower, which is you know, that's pretty decent, isn't it? Um, 
Yeah, so let's. Uh, I mean, these are, these are limited edition graphics. Uh, you know, all, all uh, with details referencing all twenty five of the James Bond films from the first Doctor No. Uh, actually, I think I think the very first James Bond film was um, Casino Royale, I believe, but it wasn't actually um, labelled as that, and that was more of a musical, wasn't it? I mean, if you've ever seen Casino, the re the original Casino Royale. But anyway, I digress. I digress. But yeah, for all terms purposes, Doctor No was probably the first one, right? Um, let's have a look here. I mean, what it's yeah, um, ba, 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 ba. there was something there. Oh, yeah, compared to the 17,950 of the standard speed triple 1200RR, the new Bond edition will cost a whopping 21,995. Order requests will be available from 1530 on the 4th of October, which is what a couple of days ago uh, on the Triumph's website. But look, I mean, look, it's, it's a nice bike, definitely nice bike. But you know they've. I, th I think they've. You know they've. They've really milked this for all it's worth. I think Triumph, bless them. You know for 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 doing this. Uh, Paul, I was looking at one in the flesh today. Ah, oh, okay. Were you really right? Okay, let me just get my uh, thing back. Let me just show that comment. I was uh, looking at them on the flesh today. My bike was in for a service to Triumph today, so it was there for seven hours. Just got. Had uh, yeah, got to have a a look at a lot of triumphs. Great, uh, was that Cheltenham? Was it uh, Cheltenham Triumph? Was it? <clears throat> yeah, look, I mean, I've always been a big fan of triumphs. I mean, I've owned a few myself, so you know, I'm quite quite happy with them. But all of these bikes here, this is just kind of filler for 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 um, for the, this live stream tonight, really. And it's a kind of pre precursor of what I'm going to talk about now because I've got an email from. Uh, let me just bring it up. Triumph here. Uh, well, you know, I've got, um, you know, um, let me have a look here. I've got more pictures about the, yeah, more pictures uh, and everything from uh, Triumph for, this, for the Speed Triple 1200RR. I've got uh, more pictures from uh, Harley Davidson and they're trying to sell me more t-shirts. Uh, but here, now I can't, I'm not sure if I can bring this out. Let me have a look. It, basically, I'm going to have to do this, see if this will work. I don't think it will work. Uh, just one second. I'm trying to show you something of my emails. Let me get rid of all those websites. I'm just going to... There we go. Get rid of that. Bring yourself there. And I'm going to stop sharing. All right, but where am I? Here we go. I'm going to share. Da -da -da, and I'm going to share the screen. The entire screen. There we go. Right. Let me see if this will come across because I don't think it will. I want to. Sh I want to. Sh Aha! It does. There we go. So this is my uh, one of the emails I, I've uh, come across here. So I'm gonna have to just now. Basically, Triumph have sent out this thing. Is that the Chrome Collection from Triumph? The Chrome Collection all will be revealed uh, from twelve o'clock on October the twenty fifth, and there's no details on it whatsoever. Nothing. No. no nothing at all. Um. Yeah, so it's. Uh, I'm just interested to see uh, what this is. Let me just bring this back now. I'm just interested to see exactly uh, what this is. What is this Triumph Chrome, this Chrome collection? Now, you know, let me just stop that. Stop that. Um, now, it could be anything, you know, you know, it could be just, uh, you know, some chrome accessories. It could be uh, a new line in clothing. It could be a new motorcycle. It could be something else. I mean, who knows? Um, yeah. So, I mean, look, I mean, yeah, Paul, you say nothing from the dealership either. I mean, it's, uh, literally this came through uh, to me uh, this morning. So I have no idea what it's about. So I was just wondering what if, if anybody else out there knows what it's about. You know, Chrome. I mean, I suppose that the name kind of gives it away in many ways. 
you know, because it's well, because let's just it can only be a chrome color, whatever it is, can only be a chrome color. Because you know, if it, it turns out to be black, then it isn't chrome, is it? If it turns out to be red, then it isn't chrome, you know. So it's a bit, a bit of an odd one there from Triumph. And I, I know they're, they're trying to generate in, interest in their product, but I just thought it was a bit of an interesting one, you know, that they've uh, they've come out with this new chrome you know and um you know as i said in the live stream the other day the um this is the silly season of of manufacturers pumping out new products or highlighting new products or new accessories or new bikes of course especially new bikes and they're coming out with this uh sort of stuff all the time uh flat cap ray uh, cafe racer the ergonomics of the rr is worse than my thrust than are a beauty for sure but i don't uh I don't see the regular R selling here. Uh, yeah, I, I was not. I mean, I sat on it, and I, I, I wasn't sure about it myself. I say, I'm the speed triple full full stop. I wasn't. I wasn't too sure about. Even the Thruxton R, I, th I thought was a nice, really nice bike, really nice ride. It looks great, but I just wasn't sure about it. But so the speed triple, you know, R, R. Mm, I'm not. I'm not convinced by it put it that way but that could be just for the way i feel about it you know what it's like with any bike any car any any anything you know any couch any um any chair you know it's how you personally fit into it and how you feel comfortable with it isn't it so you know that it's it's always a very personal thing isn't it and it's you know just because it's not right for me or not right for you it might be perfect for somebody else and i think you know but but that that bike I thought was a bit was an interesting. The other bikes which I mentioned, um, I think they've got some legs on, on them. I, I I'm not convinced that the Ducati uh, V4 Rally Multistrada is a a decent buy if you want to do any kind of off road. I mean I when I had my adventure bike and I was taking it everywhere and it was getting covered in mud and everything. And I'll never forget I popped into um. A local shop and this guy came up to me and started asking me about it i started telling him and he said crikey that's really dirty where you put i said well i've been off-roading on it and he said what crikey have you he said yeah i've got a he, i'm pretty sure he said he had a multi-strata he said he'd it, it, never take it off road because you know that's 17 grand of well whatever it was at the time 16 17 grand of bike you know, to just to drop. And that's right. You know, big adventure bikes, any bike, if you take them off road, there's a real risk you're going to drop it and damage it. And if it's a big adventure, big adventure bike, if it's, a, it's, they're going to be expensive. No matter what it is, they're going to be expensive, expensive to repair. So if you really want to go off road on a, you know, let's say, and go and have fun off road, just get yourself a cheap, a cheap old bike or just a, you know, a small, a small off road, a dirt bike or enduro bike. But leave that sort of stuff, that big bike, for the road, I would say. Or if you're just going to go, as I always say, big adventure bikes are great if you're just going down a farm track, you know, or, or something like that, or any kind of trail that is hard and compact. As soon as it gets wet or anything like that, no matter what you see on the merchant, uh, on the marketing of people jumping all over the place, that's fine. They can do that, and it's no problem. The, the average rider is not going to do that, and the average rider is probably going to be too too conscious about damaging and their bike and how much is going to cost them. You know, for the average rider, I should say. You know, you know but but there we go. Look, yeah, it's, uh, yes, the Himalayan. Hello there. Yeah, the, the Himalayan is a decent bike, I would say. If you, it's cheap, number one, cheap. It's got a bit of legs on it now it's got a bit of pedigree on it now it's been going for a few years and it, you know the build quality has got better since um the very first years that it came out as well so you know you know they, they are waiting for an upgraded uh engine on that when that will come out i don't know but it's it's you know I've, i was very impressed with it still heavy still heavy for the bike that it is but if you just want to do some pootling around slow speed bit of off-road yeah yeah definitely definitely the way to go definitely the way to go something like that or you know you don't even have to get that you can just get yourself a little old old 125 250 bike something like that 2cc and go and fill your boot boots and have loads of fun as we know 
the reason why adventure bikes are so popular is that they, you can go longer distances in more comfort, load them up, and away you go. But there is a disconnect between the reality of going off-road, proper off-road on a big adventure bike, and falling off and trying to pick them up and on a regular basis and all the damage and how much it's going to cost you. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Oh, look. Here we go. Definitely. Uh, my KTM, 390 weighs 310 pounds. Yeah. And costs 6,000 dollars yeah um and cost six hundred dollars or 150 but well yeah i know i'm not talking about whether these bikes all i'm you know are going to be exciting all i'm saying is that they might be a better option if you just want to it scratch that itch that you just want to go off road you know just get a, a, a better bike and i i always i always say this about bikes or cars or anything i don't that there are few bikes that are capable of everything and an adventure bike is capable pretty much of, of everything it can pretty much go everywhere right but when it starts to get proper off-road what i call proper off-road that it's challenging and you've got deep ruts and it's wet and slippery and you you know going all over the place you have to go up inclines and it's rocky and you have to make jumps and that kind of thing they may last. They may last. They may be able to do it once or twice, but they'll soon. They'll soon run out. They'll soon run out, and the rider will run out of faith in it. They run out of faith in that bike, you know. And you'll you'll reach the limit of what it's what it can do uh, comfortably. And then you look at what it what it can do, but you're struggling to do it. And then you think, if I could do this so much easier on a smaller bike, a more lightweight bike. And it's the right tool for the right job, isn't it? It always comes down to the right tool for the right job. An adventure bike is a good cross bike. It's a good tourer. It's a good, you know, mild off-roading bike. It's a good bike to sit up nice and comfortable, load it up with bags, load it up with camping gear, all that kind of stuff, and just go off a gentle off-roading if a little bit wherever you want to go de destination. But if you want to go serious, any kind of serious off-road, a light bike and also something that's proper capable, proper capable. And when you drop it, you can easily pick it up and it's not going to cost you a fortune to fix as well. Uh, but there we go. But there we go. Uh, I got a bad itch. Yeah, nice. Uh, right, anyway. So, listen. Um, Triumph. Triumph Chrome the chrome collection whatever it is um that's coming out let me just see when when was that date again october 25th uh at 12 i don't know what that's about no idea i wish i did i wish i did know what it was about but uh, i have no idea i mean it could be something it could be something really interesting or it could be something nothing i say so, you know the other manufacturers are you know i looked on the triumph media site earlier on and there's nothing on there in fact, their media site, just like Harley Davidson's, a bit. I've got to say, the manufacturers, the manufacturers and their media sites, you would think that they'd be so much better, so much more in, you know, up to date and current with a lot of stuff that they're producing. But they're, they're just a bit, they're just a bit lame. I've got to say, the media sites, the sometimes you get more up to date information off general motorcycle manufacturer websites in terms of the showroom the dealership website than the actual media pages which is just really weird but there we go uh it's <laughs> jiffer yeah chrome bell chrome bell for handlebars with tassels well there you go <laughs> uh you mean extreme off-road okay i do have a clearance issue <laughs> uh but look it's um i'd say that ktm 390 is a decent bike i would say the um the the um no which which was it the bmw was it the 300 what was the that that sort of size bike that they've got that's okay that's a decent little bike as well you know you put some um you put some 
you know, it's not going to be jumping rocks or you're not going to be, you know, putting through some hardcore there without damaging it. But if you make slight modifications to it, you know, with a metal um, belly sump or engine sump guard, you know, um, and maybe some knobbly tires on it, you know, the 310, that's what it is. Yes, exactly right. It's a decent bike. In fact, BMW um, made that in collaboration with, um, who was it, with Indian. In, uh, Indian motorcycles, wasn't it? Was it uh, TBS or Hero or, or somebody like that? You know, so you know there. Th there's lots of there's lots um, there's lots of collaboration between quite a few manufacturers now on these smaller bikes. Obviously, we know about Harley Davidson and the Chinese link up. Obviously, BMW with um, India, I think KTM as well have, have done something similar. I think a few other manufacturers are, are, are doing something similar as well. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, KTM, uh, BMW, uh, uh, Royal Anfield, All India, yes, yes, well, all, all part, part are, are part are, aren't they? Uh, all certainly the bikes and collaborations are, but yeah, yeah, of course, I take your point that it's too slow, uh, less capable. Yeah, I'm not talking about performance here, I'm just talking about general if you just want to get a smaller bike that is lighter that will with a minor modification you can go off-road to your heart's content really but there we go but there we go anyway listen um uh unless there's any questions i thought i'd just bring that to you i wasn't sure what the chrome the triumph chrome collection was about so i'm keeping my my uh eyes wide open my ears uh on the on the listen here for anything new that's coming out as well uh, i am getting updates uh from the many ma major manufacturers a lot of it hasn't really come out yet it hasn't really come out anything new let's just say anything really substantial anything that's earth shattering nothing nothing's really come out yet i mean harley davidson as we said we that won't be till january really that we're going to get the proper information. I probably, you know, probably think, you know, months before we start getting some more substantial, more substantive leaks. Uh, BMW haven't really done anything that is uh, earth shattering. Triumph have already had their Tiger 1200 that they've come out with. Um, all the other bikes, you know, as I say, this month, you would, you would imagine that all the manufacturers are either going to be you know, a uh, fine tuning of the models they've got, or maybe they'll just release one new model. Um, and I don't think there's many of the manufacturers are going to be releasing anything major um, until mid, probably about mid 2023. Um, I mean, if, if they do, then it would only be a, a, a model or two. There's not going to be, um, you know, a whole line of new bikes or wonderful. Uh, or not that not that we know of anyway. So, uh, uh, so you uh, oh you check the Chrome thing here. Same date later in the day. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know what it is. Don't know what it is. Uh, Ref KTM. What are your thoughts that they come out? They come with everything on them, and you get it all for a thousand miles. Then you have to pay uh, to keep them. Sorry, Ref KTM. What are your thoughts that they come with everything on them? And you get it all for one thousand miles, then you have to pay to keep them. Well, what's sorry? What's this? What's this? Is it's almost like um, uh, you have to pay an extra. I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the manufacturers are going to start coming out with, because of the way the world is going, and because I think this is linked into, you know, the, the state of the world in terms of finances and fueling costs and all this sort of stuff and insurance um, interest rates and inflation the cost of living for everybody. And obviously the manufacturers, they're trying to sell you products and it's whether us as individuals, we're going to find any value for money in those products. So they're all going to be coming out with different sort of incentives or finance agreements, all that sort of stuff. So, but, you know, but, um, but, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know specifically about. I mean, I haven't actually looked at KTM or or Huskies uh, for a few weeks actually yet, so I don't know what the the latest thing is. Uh, uh, what's this, Paul? To have all the electric things, but then you have to pay to keep them. Okay, uh, so I hadn't heard that. I mean, that sounds like a bit of an odd 
uh, offer to me. Odd policy, but there we go. Uh, Debenham Dave, yes, yes, I was watching it just now. What a what a what a strike by Skamaka, beautiful goal. Um, there we go. Uh, KTM reliability, no uh, problems for me. Seven thousand miles cheap maintenance. Yeah, I, I think it depends on the bike and depends who you speak to. Different but different uh, manufacturers. Then, you know, people always harp down about Harley Davidsons and things like that. To me, I never touch wood. Never really had a problem with my bike at all or, or nothing major nothing nothing major at all um you know uh with my last bike before the harley i had a tr the triumph the only thing that i was getting problems with that was um sense or after the initial glitches that i had to have fixed um um but uh, it was the um sensors the sensors were always failing on it or there was some kind of sensor that was popping off but that's about it that's about it so the, the bikes that I've had before, they were largely, got to say, largely trouble-free. Okay, yes, whilst I was always maintaining them and always doing little fixes here, I wouldn't say there's anything major on them. So, But I think it always depends. You know, you get lots of KTM riders, especially from the enduro world, off-road world, or dirt bike world. You know, so they're, you know, some of them would say fantastic. Most people say fantastic. Most people say how how uh, temperamental they are or, you know, bad they are or breaking down or why don't they do this? And I think anytime you get really heavily involved into a particular manufacturer, you always get closer to it and you get more in tune with it and more, more, um, you, you wonder why they don't do this or don't do that or don't fix certain things, you know, but there we go. Uh, Paul, here we go. Uh, oh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, yeah, the clock has lots of neat uh, extras, no problems. Uh, very few problems uh, with Harley KTM too. Yeah, uh, heated grips and heated seats already already fitted, but after a thousand miles, they switch them off, and you have to pay to have them put back on. Well, 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 I did not know that. Well, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? So they basically give them to you, so you might as well. Right, just buy this bike in something like October, November time. Have it for the winter. Put a thousand miles on it through the winter, and then not buy anything until the the next winter because you're never going to need them in the spring and the summertime, are you? Well, oh, that's, that's a bit of a that's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? They switch. They basically switch it off at the ECM, the uh, the bike computer. I assume. There we go. Uh, kickstand sense on the worst by the warranty, no problem. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's this is uh, there we go. I think if you if you pay for the bike, you should be able to use it all. Yeah, and it, it, it's a trial. This is a trial. Yeah, I, I, I would imagine. I, I would I would imagine that there's going to be lots of harebrained ideas over the next couple of years, two, three years, where manufacturers are going to be trying different ways to get sell you a product but also get as much money out of it or offer discounts and then get it back later on you know but there we go but there we go anyway listen guys um thanks for joining the show i say i i just really wanted to come on and talk about a few things about the mainly the triumph and um you know some of the bikes that they're doing or not doing but some of the things that they're they're going to be coming out with um uh, Paul, B apparently BMWs are looking to do the same. But yeah, I, I just think it's a bit of an odd strategy. You know, they give you something and then they take it away. However, however, I suppose this is no different from when you buy a brand new car, let's say, and they give you like sat nav or they give you, um, you know, calling or car wi-fi or anything and they only give that to you for the first like year or a couple of years or whatever then if you want to continue with that service into the car you have to pay for it so i think that's probably along the same lines you know anyway listen guys thanks thanks for joining us i know it's only a short one tonight but i really wanted to come on and uh, go through a few things 
Uh, there is a video coming out tomorrow morning. Uh, so check that out. There'll be another one on uh, Monday and then next Friday as well. So I'm basically I'm doing the videos every Monday and Friday now. Um, and that's giving me a lot more time to do other things, a lot more time to come on and do uh, live shows as well and chat. I think the live shows I'm really just going to keep for current news, topical news. And if something comes out, I'll quickly talk about it and, and then away we go. Uh, or if something you know sparks my interest, or something I want to talk about, I, th I think, you know, whatever. Uh, I'll come on and do a live show. But, you know, the videos are going to be more storytelling, I suppose, as it were. Uh, but uh, if you ever want to discuss a topic, uh, or for me to discuss a topic, or raise something, or whatever, drop us an email. It's probably the best thing. Drop us an email and um, let us know your ideas, what you want to talk about. If you'd like to come on, and be a guest on here and and talk about uh, this kind of uh, anything motorcycle related, Harley Davidson, Triumph, Honda, whatever it is, whatever bikes you're into, any kind of lifestyle thing, or if you want to publicize an event or discuss about something, event, something like that, just drop us an email, let us know, and I'll, I'll walk you through the process. Essentially, I'll just send you the link. You come on and you can just, as long as you've got a phone that can do video, you, you'll be able to uh, join in. Uh, but anyway, listen. Thanks for uh, thanks for uh, coming on. Here we go. Oh, here we go. What's this? Uh, Brad here. Hello, Brad. Uh, looking to get a KLR 650. Yeah, will be my zombie apocalypse bike. Sure, it's slow, vibrating, oil guzzling machine. But I'm used to that. Got an 883. Good streamer. Regards from South Africa. Uh, thank you very much. I think KLR 650s is uh, a decent bikes. I think. <clears throat> um. Aren't they bringing out a new one? I think they're bringing out a brand new one, but only for, for certain markets. I could be wrong there. I could be wrong, but I, I think they are. I'm the old KLR 650s. Yeah, I mean, they're, they are what they are. I mean, I remember a guy years ago who went all the way around. Was it all the way around the world or, or South America? And he, yeah, he's a very famous blog at the time, but then he kind of just stopped doing it all. Um, but he, you know, he had a... Um, yeah, he had a KLR650, didn't he? I think. Uh, yeah, I think it's K I remember when they first came out, the KLR650s, actually. And really nice bikes. And I think that one of the reasons why they stopped producing them or selling them in, in the UK or Europe was because of emissions control, emission standards. They could never meet it. But look, great, great, great uh, bike. Yeah, I've heard mumbles about a new 650. Yes. Yeah, I, I have as well. I'm not the only one then. Yeah, I'm sure I was sure up there somewhere that it um it was. But uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely right. I mean, it's 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 a it's a, it's a tall, it's a heavy bike for what it is. But again, if you're not really doing anything crazy with it, then it's it's a decent bike, you know. And you could pick them up for half decent money before. So um, you know, and um, I mean, just like anything these days, it's uh. Yeah, interesting one. Yeah, a new one. Uh, a new one is getting released. I'll be getting an older model, cheaper and less technology to mess with. Look, I mean, there's a lot to be said for that. I think there's a lot to be said that if you've got an older bike, I mean, a really older bike, and you can just fix it with spanners and a bit of electrical tape, you can fix that thing on the side of the road or somewhere. I think there's a lot to be said for that. You know, and I, I think we can all leave it there. Whilst we, all the new bikes are lovely, let's face it: if they break down on any sort of side of the road, you're gonna you're gonna be pushing the bloody thing, aren't you? Like I was a couple of weeks ago with with, uh, with or a few weeks ago now with that uh, that small bike there. But there we go. I'm sure you saw the video, right? Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a nice glass of wine and uh, go and celebrate uh, my football team getting a victory in europe tonight but i'll catch you again on another live stream whatever it is don't forget that video coming out tomorrow thanks for all your support thanks for watching go check out the website you can show your support there with merch and paypal and all that sort of stuff or super thanks after uh, this is gone but anyway yes paul morris thank you dfl um i hope you i'm pronouncing that right sdfl what's your first name by the way uh, anyway um but uh yeah Paul, good vibes. Thank you very much. And uh, Debenham Dave. There, uh, missed you. Up the Amis. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, Vision Mugen, thank you. And uh, thank you very much for all. I'm sure I've mispronounced everybody's names tonight, but there we go.
it's it's getting late. I'm getting old. I'm getting late. I've had a long, hard day uh, doing stuff. Right. That's it. It's been emotional. You're beautiful. Thanks very much. And I'll catch you again. Ta-da. <laughs>